Hello, my avid readers. I hope you're having a great day. Today in reading, we're going to continue talking about ways to make you an avid reader. Remember, an avid reader is someone who loves to read and can't wait to get a book and don't want to put it down once they get a book. Yesterday, we talked about how we could um, act out parts. We could play pretend with our books and we could get up and move like the characters and we could use gestures, use our hands like characters too. Well, today we're going to do more. We're going to act like we are, as we're reading the story, we're thinking about what the character is saying in the book, even though it's not in the book. And when we do that, we use something called speech bubbles. I know we've talked about this before in writing. Speech bubbles are where you draw a little bubble like this and then you put what the person is saying inside of it. Speech bubbles can look like that or a speech bubble can look like this. So we're going to practice that today with our story that I know Miss Stevens has been reading to you for the read aloud and I think your teacher has read to you too in class and it's called Not Norman, a goldfish story. So hopefully you've heard this story before. It's about a little boy who gets a present for his birthday. We're going to try using this story with our speech bubbles. It says, when I got Norman, I didn't want to keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet, not Norman. So this is where we could use one of our speech bubbles. And it doesn't tell us what he's thinking, but we can tell by his face that he's not feeling too good, is he? Yeah, he looks a little sad or disappointed. Well, what do you think he's saying? inside of his head because you guys know that a lot of times we have thoughts going through our head that we don't say out loud either one because they might hurt someone's feelings or two it's just not time to talk at that time well here's one that I thought he might be saying so I drew my speech bubble and then I wrote in there this is not what I wanted even though he's not saying that out loud that's what I think He's thinking inside his head. And then I thought about poor Norman. And Norman, right here I wrote, he doesn't like me. Sad face. Because even now it's showing Norman's a little worried with a little bit of a sad face. It doesn't say what he's actually thinking. So we could use a speech bubble to show it. And then if I look over here at the parents, I could put a speech bubble next to them. And I don't have to write it every time, but I could just say aloud, Oh, look, he loves his present. I hope he does. Even though they're not really saying that, their faces are showing us that they're happy that they got him that present. Let's try this on another page. It says, I wanted a pet who could run and catch or one who could climb trees and chase strings. A soft furry pet to sleep on my bed at night, not Norman. All Norman does is swim around and around and around and around and around and around and around. So look at poor Norman in the bowl. What do you think he's thinking? Well, we can see... He's probably, if I were to say, I bet he's thinking, oh no, he's going to get rid of me. And Norman might be thinking, how boring. This isn't what I wanted. Even though it doesn't tell us that, we can see by their faces. Let's try it on another page. This is it, Norman, I decide. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move. Not even a fin twitches. How can I trade him like this? No one would want a sorry-looking fish in a gunky bowl. Look at Norman. Poor Norman. Look at the boy. It doesn't tell us what he is thinking inside of his head. But I bet he's thinking, I can't wait to get a new pet. 
And poor Norman, I bet he's thinking, please clean my bowl. I'm sad, because fish don't like to swim in dirty fish bowls. So when I drop Norman into his nice clean bowl, he starts dipping and flipping and flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy that I have to laugh. Don't think that just because you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you. I tell him, tomorrow, you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles. Let's look closely at Norman. Look at him. I can tell that he looks happy, maybe content. I bet he's saying in his brain, oh, much better. And I could write that down if I wanted to, or I could have, or I could just leave it like that. And I bet Norman's thinking, Whew, that was tough, but you do look better. So friends, that's what I want you to try to do today. I made a copy of a few more pages in the story, not Norman, that I want you to look at with your parents or whoever is at home helping you with this. And I made a copy of some of these speech bubbles for you as well. And what I'd like for you to do is have your parent read with you on the next couple of pages and use these speech bubbles to write down what you think the character is thinking. Even though, because it's not going to tell us, it's going to show us with their face, but it doesn't tell us with the words. So that's what I want you to do to practice becoming more of an avid reader. I want you to think what the character is thinking, even though he's not saying it. And Take some pictures for me. Show your teachers these pages with the speech bubbles on them. If you have any questions, reach out to your teacher, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, my avid re readers.